lessons learned uh, since since going public. What are your takeaways? Uh, well, go public when you're ready. I mean, we, we're uh, naturally proud of the business that we built over 14 years. Uh, you know, we had 10 years of profitability. I think we had kind of sound fundamentals, and I think that was you know well received on the market when we went public. And so, you know, I think to companies that are considering taking that step, be ready. So, Alex, you know, it, it, it was the worst, one of the worst years uh, for tech IPOs since the recession. What are investors saying to you about what to look for in 2017 and what the market will look like? Uh, frankly, and I was telling Jay this earlier, people are waiting for another company that does look like Atlassian. We've had some big consumer names like Snapchat and Spotify, uh, according to our sources, they're looking to go next year, but they won't make up the majority of the number of companies that will actually go out. And so a lot of the enterprise world companies, companies that sell to businesses, those are the ones we're gonna be paying attention to. And after this really rocky year, investors have been saying we want more than just revenue growth, we want profitability as well. It's less risky and we're more willing to take a bet on it on the valuations that, that the companies want to see. So those are gonna be a lot of the factors that play into 2017. And frankly, Emily, for the whole kind of funding environment, private and public, we really need to see a good year because investors need to know they can actually make money off of getting in these companies either pre or post IPO. Now, Jay, Atlassian was profitable for three years before it went public, which uh, is unusual in that we talk about so many companies that are already public and are still not profitable. Do you think that companies should wait until they are profitable? What would your advice be? Uh, you know, we were profitable for 10, not three years prior, but I, I think it really depends on the company. I mean, you know, every single company is unique. Um, I think com companies that kind of have a model and a perspective on when they can return cash to investors or cash to the business free cash flow, I think as long as they can articulate that and they've got a model that they have experience with or they have, have line of sight to, they're probably ready. In our case, like, you know, we demonstrated profitability, so the model that we were, you know, we were going to telegraph to the to public investors, we'd already demonstrated. So, Alex, interestingly, Australia bucked the slow IPO trend in that the number of deals actually went up from 2015 to 2016. What's behind that? It's got to be uh, looking for that homegrown investor that buys into the story. Again, if you look at U.S. markets, where a lot of companies do like to list because there's a deep investor base, there's a lot of comparables, and we know that that's important when you're pricing these listings. Uh, potentially, because of the volatility this year, because of the risk-off uh, atmosphere that investors had basically until Labor Day, uh, looking to a local market is probably not a bad idea. And there was Australia. You also saw it with Line listing uh, um, domestically in Tokyo and also in the US and that was a very large listing so the dynamics of the US market some of the concerns around Brexit in London which is another big uh, venue for listings uh, potentially is driving some of these companies to look to their uh, home market first now Jay talk to us a little bit about what your new product roadmap looks like and where you see the most growth potential well, we, you know, our, our, our focus is on teams, um, teams broadly inside of, of, of every business. And so our ambition is to have, uh, you know, every worker inside of every company using Atlassian product every day. Uh, teams need to track and manage work, uh, create and share content and communicate in real time. And our roadmap is focused on expanding our products, Jira, Confluence, and HipChat to support those core needs of teamwork. What changes do you see in the enterprise software market over the next few years? Obviously, we've seen, you know, big players like Microsoft and even Facebook uh, try to take on this market. Facebook starting its own Facebook at work. Uh, do you think big tech companies will be as successful as, you know, smaller homegrown companies like yours? I think that remains to be seen. Certainly, the, the, they're worth watching. Um, I do think, you know, what's more interesting is sort of the blend of, you know, consumer tech and consumer expectations and consumer usability into enterprise technology that's been happening for a while. You know, our products, as an example, demonstrate things that, you know, I think people entering the work workforce today as, as, you know, young people in the workforce would expect the ability to at mention someone or the ability to see a list of activity through a feed. Those kinds of things, I think, in the way that we use, uh, you know, technology uh, on a personal basis needs to move into the workforce faster than it than it has.